You know, in banana, people have one and a half meter of setback. So you can see what your neighbor is having for dinner or breakfast. Here you have six meter and six meter, 12 meter between you and your... Hello everyone, welcome to the Ono Home TV show. Today we will be exploring the differences and similarities between Banana Island and Eco Atlantic, two prime coastal estates along the Ikoi and Victoria Island foreshore. Is Banana Island left behind and the next best thing Eco Atlantic? Banana Island is a sandfield area of approximately 1.6 square meters of land at the southwest of Ikoi and is divided into 536 plots. 1,000 and 4,000 square meters in size. The island is designed for a mixed development with plots for residential, commercial and recreational areas, a main piazza, primary and secondary schools, fire and police stations, clinics, hotels and clubhouses designed to enhance the historically residential nature of Ikui. Many people do not realize its construction was a joint venture development between the construction division of the Chaguri Group and the Nigerian Federal Ministry of Works and Housing. This is an important detail, the role of the Chaguri brothers in the construction of Banana Island. They also provided utilities including underground electrical system, an underground water supply network, central sewage system, treatment plants, street lighting, satellite communications network, as well as overhead and stormwater covered drainage for the entire estate. You could find this information on their site, but it has now been wiped off. In fact, Shaguri Construction currently do not have an accessible website, and this can only be accessed with the cache of the website from several years ago. I wonder why. This is interesting because Shaguri Construction is a subsidiary under the Shaguri Group and almost the same year between 2007 and 2008, another subsidiary under the Shaguri Group, the South Energy X, would begin the development of Eco Atlantic City. Cost of land in Banana Island Cost of land in Banana Island starts from $1,100 per square meters and a 1,400 square meter land in Banana Island can go for as high as 2.4 billion Naira. But Banana Island is almost fully built out and the scramble for the limited 1.6 square meters of land in this exclusive prime neighborhood has driven investors, speculators and developers to indiscriminate building and reclamation and in January 2001, the Lagos state government issued a suspension order on all approvals in respect to land extensions in the lagoon at Banana Island and Osborne Foreshore Ikui. A statement jointly signed by the Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development, Dr. Idris Salako, and his counterpart in the Ministry of Waterfront Development, noted that there had been increasing and continued degradation of the Lagos shoreline as a result of indiscriminate, illegal dredging, reclamation, and land extensions in the Lagos Lagoon. They were very specific about the illegality carried out at Banana Island. Ikoyi Osborne for sure. Two years later, on the 12th of April 2003, a seven story building in the Woodlands Development collapsed in Banana Island, Lagos. The building which collapsed is a seven story building which was part of a four block development still under construction. This was the first major collapse in Lagos in 2003 and it came less than two years after the collapse of the 360 tower by four score homes in the same Ikoi axis at Gerard Road by four score homes. According to a press release by the Ministry of Physical Planning and Urban Development, the building was unapproved. The Lagos State Government released a statement on the official website through the State Commission of Information and Strategy, Binga Omoto Sean said that the Lagos State Government had launched a probe into the collapse. Quadrants 2 and 3 have been leveled to ground zero, having completed the search operations. Quadrants 1 and 4 were ongoing. 
The statement continued saying that the building was hitherto sealed by the Lagos state government for not having the approval to commence construction, but the developers continued to build, hiding under the security of their estate or gated community. The governor directed that all developments on Banana Island be placed on hold subject to a comprehensive audit by the officials of the Lagos State Building Control Agency. This was to determine how many buildings were being constructed without approval and if all approved buildings were being built in line with the approval limits provided. This was the second major disaster in Banana Island, but the question remains, how possible is it that the government could not get access into an estate? And how possible is it that all this while the government and concerned agencies were not aware of the illegal construction? But the biggest question to me is this. The page that this statement was published in has now been deleted and no longer exists. We do not know the result of the investigation. What happened to the developer? What happened to that development? Did the government acquire it? What's going on there now? This just raises more questions than answers. So we'll leave it here for now in Banana Island to explore Echo Atlantic City. The construction of Banana Island and Echo Atlantic City began almost at the same time between 2007 and 2008. Today, Banana Island is a fully built out functioning estate and while well, Echo Atlantic is still being built out and a little bit functional. So let's talk about Echo Atlantic and go back to its history. Echo Atlantic City is a visionary project in Lagos, Nigeria, located adjacent to Victoria Island and Lekki. It will measure a total of 10 million square meters of reclaimed land when fully completed. It has rapidly transformed the coastline into a world-class destination that showcases the true potential of urban development. Privately funded by South Energy X Nigeria Limited and designed as a sustainable and futuristic city, Echo Atlantic boasts a remarkable array of amenities and infrastructure, offering an unparalleled living experience. Now let's look at the history of Echo Atlantic. Echo Atlantic City was birthed in 2003 as a solution to environmental hazards arising from the perennial flooding of the Lagos Barbage. For many years, the Lagos Barbage had developed a reputation for overflowing its bank and claiming lives and property. Many times, the Amadou Bello Way, the road closest to its bank, was closed for safety reasons. Studies showed that between 14 to 8 meters of beachfront were eroded annually along the bar beach. In 2003, the idea of a modern city on the Atlantic coast was publicly discussed. It would be a reclaimed land that would be sited on what used to be the bar beach. It will be called the Atlantic City, a residential and business district standing or rather sitting on 10 million square meters of land reclaimed from the ocean and protected by an 8.5 kilometer long sea wall called the Great Wall of Lagos. In 2005, the then Lagos State Governor, now President of Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, in a letter addressed to President Olusegun Obasanjo, the President as a then, entitled permanent solution to the Bar Beach sought the latter's approval for the reclamation of the coastal land on behalf of a private investor that would convert the liability to an asset that would benefit Lagos State and the Nigerian people at large. That private investor was South Energy X Nigeria Limited, the developers and city planner, a subsidiary of the Nigerian-based Chaguri Group of Companies, working in strategic partnership with the Lagos State Government and supported by the Federal Government of Nigeria. In the same year, President Olusegun Obasanjo gave an approval for the commencement of the project. 
the approval was on the condition that the development project be strictly supervised to ensure that it did not stray beyond the confines of the law as well as the gambit of the approval given to the company. In 2008, the construction of the new city began. And as at May 2009 of the next year, while the site was being dredged, about 3 million cubic meters of space were sand filled and placed in the reclamation area, while about 35,000 tons of rock were delivered to the site. Presently, 6,520,000 square meters of land out of the estimated 10 million square meters has been reclaimed with the Great Wall of Lagos having reached 6.8 kilometers in length out of the total length of 8.6 kilometers. It is almost 20 years later and infrastructural development has achieved substantial completion in phases 1 and 2. Both phases a total combined area of 5 million square meters with a high portion of the road network already defined with curb lines and block paving together with sidewalk, street lighting and planted trees. Infrastructural development in phase 3 is also underway and 14 major bridges are fully complete. Utility services comprising stormwater drainage, sewer drainage, water supply, electrical power distribution and fiber optic cable network for IT services and in full progress alongside road works. Eco Atlantic City is entering the next and final phase of its land reclamation efforts and the sand filling process for the phase 4 of the project will commence immediately after the completion of phase 3 and extend towards its designated area. The construction of infrastructure and buildings is progressing steadily across phases 1, 2, 3. But despite these great strides and enormous progress with functional structures like the Eco Peril Tower, Azuri Peninsula, Eco Energy Estate among others, the cost of land in Eco Atlantic. The cost of a plot of land is dependent on its size and location in Eco Atlantic. Land is sold per square meter and plot sizes in phase 1 and phase 2 start from approximately 2,200 square meters. That's the least you can buy. And prices per square meter within this phase starts from $1,150 per square meter. In phase 3, land within this phase starts from approximately 1,200 square meters. That's the least you can buy. Mainly for low-rise residential houses where the land prices are at $1,050 per square meter. There is no maximum capping on the amount of land that can be purchased. Each plot of land can be used for a residential or commercial development or a mix of both, as Eco Atlantic is designed to be a mixed use city. It's important to bear in mind that plots in phases 1 and 2 have been created to accommodate mid to high rise buildings, and in phase 3, some plots have been created to accommodate single residential dwellings and low-rise developments. Land in the Marina District can go as high as $30,000 per square meter. Which would you prefer? Banana Island or Eco Atlantic? Would you rather buy a house in Banana Island or buy land in Banana Island or buy in Eco Atlantic? Thank you so very much for watching. If you're interested in any of them, contact me to get you started on your journey. This is the Own a Home, the NGTV show. Here on a Home, we believe that owning a home, owning a property should not make you lose sleep. So we're committed to giving you the very best property recommendations and it's how that real estate gist. Thank you so much for watching. Kindly like, share and subscribe. See you at the very next video. Bye-bye.